here's the problem. We observe the irradiance not the E-field. If we could see the E-field, it wouldn't be so bad. But you can't see the E-field. All you can do is absorb energy from the electromagnetic field, and the energy is irradiance. So let's recall the irradiance. It was E-E -E was the symbol, the proper symbol, and it was the time average of the magnitude of the pointing vector, something like that. And we thought about it. How the pointing vector is really E cross B uh, with some constants, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I told you that it's proper to label irradiance E E because I is for other things like intensity. But for now, we're going to call it I because it just gets too confusing. Most optics books do this. If you call it E E and then you start calculating electric fields, there's too many E's. E's everywhere. So for now, we're going to go ahead and break the technical rules and call it I. It's one way we're going to break the rules. And the other is we're going to write it like this. We're going to call it epsilon naught c, still a time average, but we weren't going to need that magnitude because we're going to call it e sum dot e sum. We're going to dot the field with itself. We can do that because this was a vector because it's proportional to e cross b, which gives you a vector. And then we took the magnitude, and then we said, well, actually, if you substitute to b, z over c, et cetera, et cetera, you get really, the magnitude goes as e squared. Well, you can't cross e with itself. It does, you know, then you get zero. So you can also write um, the magnitude of this vector as a dot product of e with itself, or a dot product of b with itself. So we're doing it as e dot e, and these are the proper uh, constants in front, and that's why the bars aren't there. It's because this is a scalar, not a vector. So that's all that's going on. So a little bit of a change in notation. Okay, so this is the summed, this is the total um, irradiance if we take the summed field. So we can then say that's epsilon naught c times the time average of, well, what was E sum? E1 plus E2 times E1 plus E2. That's what E sum is, right? It's E1 plus E2. So we can say, okay, well then, let's keep doing algebra. C times the time average of E1 dotted with itself plus uh, E2 dotted with itself plus the cross term is E1 dotted with E2. And there's two of those, two E1 dot E2, like that because a dot b is b dot a. All right, well, the time average, uh, you can distribute across those. You don't have to take the time average of the whole thing. You can add up your time averages. So you get that i sum is uh, epsilon naught c times the time average of e1 dot e1 plus epsilon naught c times the time average of e2 dot e2 plus epsilon naught c times the time average of 2, e1 dot e2. All right. And then you look at that and you say, oh, this is the irradiance of uh, wave 1. And this is the irradiance of wave two. And this is what we call the interference term. Okay. So if we have two plane waves and each of them has say one watt per meter squared and they overlap, if you don't think about interference, you would say, well, it must make two watts per meter squared, right? And that's what you would get if you just add these two. One watt per meter squared plus one watt per meter squared is two watts per meter squared. But the interference we know can make them cancel or add. And this is the term that gives you that interference. So this is usually written in shorthand as I sum is I1, the irradiance of 1, plus I2, the irradiance of 2, plus the interference term I12. So it looks like simple little numbers, but in physics we know this is a constant, this is a constant, this thing is going to vary and mess everything up. Right? Um, 
this is typically constant, constant, and this is the one that's going to oscillate and give you your constructive interference and your destructive interference.